Hi, this is Carl the Cobra Frutch, and you're watching Lights Out. This is Fessel Khan for Lights Out, proudly sponsored by Spartans Lawn. For the very first time in Lights Out, I'm delighted to be joined by Izzy Azif. Izzy, uh, thank you very much for taking your time out to speak to me. How are you doing? Yeah, really good, thank you, really good. Enjoying the night and looking forward to heavyweight dust up. Well, I've got to say, I've been very impressed with what you guys have been doing over at GBM Sports. I mean, you guys are growing massively. It's been a great year for you. You're also making a lot of history on your next show, October the 6th, in the new venue. Just talk to us a bit about the upcoming show on October the 6th, but also the new venue you guys are going to show to your fans. So Friday 6th of October, we've got our best show today. We've got Reece Small fighting Martin McDonough for the WBA Continental Europe title. We've got Nicola Hopewell versus Emma Dolan for the Super Flyweight title, Commonwealth Super Flyweight title. Packed out on the card, undefeated fighter, big prospects. Listen, we're making Sheffield history at a brand new arena. We've spent nearly £20 million on this arena. And we're fortunate enough to put the first ever sporting event on there which is a great kind of testament to our team who's worked ever so hard just to get it over the line so yeah a proud day for us all involved in GBN Sports. When you talk about the proud cities of boxing Sheffield, London, Liverpool, you know, Manchester, Sheffield I mean you look at the Ingalls gym for example some of the great fighters that have come up from Sheffield you know are you trying to all trying to maybe start to rebuild boxing again in Sheffield or do you think as if that where it is right now, it's in a good place, but it's lacking something a bit different. Well, if you know, if you look at the top promoters in the country for years, for the last 20, 30 years, they've all been down south. Yeah, you've got Ben Shalon now in Manchester. I feel, I feel like a big promotion outfit in Yorkshire, Sheffield, is really going to boost the city a bit more. Give them that little bit of hope, because sometimes, yeah, even though the top promoters are very attainable for the fights, having a promoter in your own city, in your own area, you're used to, you see regular, it does give you a bit of a lift. I feel like we are going to make an impact in Yorkshire boxing and, and Sheffield boxing in particular and listen yeah we want to spread our brand all over the country but yeah it's, it's, Sheffield's always been a hotbed Sheffield's always been a hot, hotbed for boxing I think we're just going to be part of that journey and part of that history as well when I look at your shows and follow you on social media I see positive vibes I see good fights good fighters as well and you seem to be taking a different approach now but, I mean you, you're, you've been in the game for a short time but are you going to be an easy promoter to work with? Because I feel as if with a lot of promoters today, your Eddie Hearns, your Frank Warrens, boxing would benefit so much if everybody was to work together. Is that something you want to look to do as well with the other promoters? Yeah, without a shadow doubt, there's not a single promoter in the country I wouldn't work with. You know, in this kind of game, you've got to put your personal reasons and beside and just do, do the numbers and do the game. And listen, the fighters only get one chance. So if I've got a fighter and another promoter offering a lot more money than I'm, I cannot hold it back. That goes against everything I believe in. I've been a fighter myself. I understand how short this game is. So if, if another promoter offers money, and I might not have a particularly nice relationship with that promoter, but you've got to put that aside and you've got to do what's best for your fighters and, and make it work. And I hope I can keep this kind of same ethos and kind of energy all through my promotional career where I, I genuinely want to believe to work with any promoter, whether I, whether I particularly like them or not. It's, it's business with numbers and that's hopefully I can keep it that way. Like I said, I see a lot of positive vibes of what you're trying to do. You know, just how big is these next 12 to 18 months for GBM Sports and yourself? And also, what is the overall target within the next 18 months? What are you looking to achieve? You know, I, I say it all the time, and I don't know if people think, is he just full of shit and saying it? I genuinely believe we'll be top four or five promoters in the country, and that's a big big statement. You say, I only started 18 months ago, but I've got that kind of vision. I kind of, I believe we'll do it. I've got that, I've got the right psyche for it. I've got the right backing for it. And yet only one or two things to kind of fix up all the jigsaw and finalise our team. And one of them is potentially a TV deal. Because listen, we're already talking to one or two channels and one or two people that are thinking we wanted a TV deal. But I think we've still got a bit to go where we've got to strengthen our team, strengthen our, 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 our fighting fighters as well, which will come. That will come gradually, gradually will come. And I think, listen, keep growing, keep pushing, not get carried away. Keep grounded, but I genuinely believe I'll be, will be, GBM Sports will be top three, four promotion outfits in the country on one day. I see you spending quite a bit of time with Billy Joe Saunders in the back. Um, he's a fighter that I'd love to see come back to the sport of boxing. Is there a potential chance you and him might work together? And can you see Billy Joe returning to the ring at some point? Yeah, but I reckon this year's Billy Joe make a comeback. Funny stories when Billy Joe heard about me through a mutual friend, he thought, oh, just another promoter trying his luck. 
until we actually spent some time together and started doing stuff. He really believed, he kind of, listen, Billy Joe's been in this game for a long time. When Billy Joe goes on Instagram and social and talks so highly for him, he sees something in me and that's, you know, he's not, I've not pushed it to him, he's, he's gone on his own accord to support us and back us. And listen, with Jet, I try staying true to my fighters, I try being honest as I can, you know, in a game where you've got a bad stigma for promoters, I'm trying to change that kind of outlook for promoters, trying to be straight as I can. I just put the deals on the table and I believe you can succeed in promotion by being straight to the fighters, being honest as the day is long and just just listen, be true to yourself and enjoy enjoy the ride. You're coming through it in boxing at a time where there's a lot of YouTube boxing, a lot of influencer boxing, a lot of crossover boxing. I mean, yeah, what's your thoughts on the whole crossover of social media, influencer boxing and more importantly, what do you make of Tyson Fury's next fight with Francis Ngannou? See, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a boxing purist. I'm a boxing, Jamie, all right? I'm a boxing purist, you know, I've been involved in boxing for 20 odd years. And uh, listen, I understand the benefit of YouTube and your misfits. I understand, and if it's encouraged people to get into sport, brilliant, go for it. But for me, I'm, I stick to professional boxing, focus on what I like, the passion I like. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not knocking it, but let's separate, let's get, let's define what's professional boxing, what's YouTube boxing, what's misfit, because there's a bit of all sorts chucked in it. But listen, I'm a professional boxing promoter. That's my passion. That's where I've been in for 20 odd years. And I'll, st I'll stick to my lane with that. You've been in the sport of boxing, you know, practically your whole life. And as I just mentioned, you know, crossover, social media influence of boxing, it's rising whether people like it or not. Now, we've got KSI versus Tommy Fury coming up in a few weeks. You know, does KSI beating Tommy Fury maybe damage the professional side of boxing? Or do you think it could be good for boxing if a crossover boxer was to be an actual professional boxer? See, I think you've got to take it for what it is. It's not professional boxing. See, so KSI beating Tommy Fury, does he have a dent in the boxing? No, he doesn't. Boxing's got his own credibility and has for years and years and years. And one fighter fighting somebody for financial gain, which is credit to him. If somebody's willing to pay you a stupid amount of money to fight KSI, go and, go and do it. You know, there's not much money in it. But I just feel for them kids who go up and down the country as amateur fighters, you know, 10, 15 years of working their socks off, and they end up having a professional debut and then a thousand pound. If somebody's got a nice big social media platform and backing, and he can earn seven figures fighting somebody who's not even a professional box, not gone through the training, not gone through the hardship, not gone through the governing bodies to get his license. But listen, let them carry on. Let's let's separate it. Let's let's clearly define what professional boxing in and what YouTube and misfits is. Before I let you go, is he? Naming the three fights you want to see in 2024 could be from any weight, could be any fighter. But what does the three fights need to be for boxing to keep on rising in in, in a positive light? In, listen, we want to see that AJ Fury. Like everybody does. That's that's a massive one. It's got to happen, hasn't it? If it don't happen in 2024, I don't think it'll happen. Uh, I like to see that. Listen, I like to see maybe towards end of year, maybe Dalton Smith, Adam Azim, maybe. Maybe, you know, it could be a bit more experience with Adams. That could be a great, great fight, great domestic fight. And uh, who else would I like to see? Listen, i like to see... If, 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 if Conor Ben stays around, I think, because of the history, the Chris Eubank Jr. and Conor Ben would be a massive, massive fight. The whole build-up and everything that's gone wrong with it at the start, I think, will be a massive fight. Them three fights will really stand out. And I think they will happen, as long as the whole promotion outfits work together. And let's, let's make it happen, because boxing needs that up, don't we? We need to push it. A lot of competition, we'd like you said, we miss fits and UFC. And just keep that boxing tradition up and, and we'll get, these, get, get these things on the show. GBM Sports practically friend here, naming the hat to promote uh, Eubank Jr. versus Ben. Listen, I'll promote anybody if the if numbers come. Yeah, we put any show on. Who knows? Listen, who knows? Listen, it all started off with a bit of a vision, and people laughed at us then. And you know, if I start saying we're going to be top three, four, there'll be people thinking, "Is this kid lost his plot?" But listen, I've heard it all before. There was a fight we called for for many years, Khan and Brook, and a new kid on the block, on the block, i.e. Ben Shalom came along and made it happen. So yeah. if he can do it, why can't you do it? Well, let me tell you something. That Khan and Brook got negotiated. Negotiation started. They my office in Sheffield. Okay, so you're playing a part yeah, in that, yeah? Terry Brook, Terry, Terry Brook, if he's doing what he watches, he tell you, he are coming to my office, I FaceTime him here. We only started the negotiations, and obviously, there's a lot of work to go ahead with, and I had nothing to do with that, but the negotiation, the initial one started off in the office, but listen, great story, but listen, we're going to create our own history, and uh, you know, we're just going to keep enjoying the ride and keep pushing. Izzy Azif, thank you very much for your time, I really appreciate it. We wish you the best of luck on October 6th, and hopefully it's the first of many interviews with Lights Out. I appreciate that, thank you very much.